All right, evening, everybody. Have we uploaded the assignments to turn it in that I've asked you to do? I'm not hearing anybody. Hello, class. Hi, sir. I did upload my two on 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 turn it in. Okay, one is one is actually group. So, oh yes, I'm seeing. For example, the research day review is there, and the group presentation. Why this one is so? Remember, it's one person from. The, why do I think that these persons are uploading? Um, probably because if this is fifty two. Submitted. Sir, I'm in a member one meeting in a group. So I'm looking at my email. I'm not no. Renee mm -hmm. and I said I'm here the day in the same group. Oh, me and you. Me and look at me not no. Right. So this is this is an example. Let me share a screen of an example. Right. So this is one that was uploaded. I hope the names of the group members and the ID numbers are there enough as. All right, so I'm seeing Yannick Johnson and Olivia Williams. Apparently they work together. Give me a sec. So I'm seeing three being submitted. So I'm hoping other persons have submitted. All right, you saw the coursework. Sir, the one with the re resume and memo and press something. The one that I sent yesterday. You're supposed to be checking your emails, you know. I sent it yesterday, and I think you were the one asking me all kinds of questions. I'm talking coursework three. Let me just bring it up. Uh, when I'm alone, yes, sir, that's the one I'm asking you about. But there's no resume on that one. So I mean memoir and and and, and press release thing. I saw it, sir. So this is it. And we print, we covered there, you're doing one of the two, the memo, the agenda, the action minutes, and the press release. And we're going to finish up the press release today. I think I gave you homework, right? What did I ask you to do for homework for the press release? I asked you to find an article a press release that you consider to be very good and label the various elements of the press release. I'm sure that's what I had asked. Do we have that? I am listening guys. I know I ask everybody to do that. Sorry, where to label it? I thought you said we're gonna talk about it later. Well, we can talk about it. I just want to know that you have it. Do you have it? I just found one and sent it in the group, I'm not sure. 
Okay. I saw that, but I want you to, can you share it now on screen? Just go back in the group and click and share it. Are you able to share a screen or not? Are you not able to? There is. Uh, let me just double check to ensure. I'm not seeing the article though. So this is it, several children killing Russia, school shooting. Are we seeing, so let's see the title again. So we have the headline. Are we seeing the date line? This is the subheading at least seven children and two adults. So we have the dateline, but it's differently formatted because they have, it's the 11th of May, 2021. We have the lead, at least nine people, including that were killed on Tuesday morning after. All right, we're seeing that. All right, scroll. All right. Thank you very much. Anybody else wants to share? Anybody else has anything else to share? There is another type of press release that I want to make mention of, that I want to make mention of. Uh, let me see if I can share it. So we most most um organizations know right what we call written press releases, but what has been happening over time is that some of the media houses are now asking for press releases that are not just written but also includes audiovisual content or even audio. And uh, I'm trying to do, why is it not working? Oh, hold on, give me one sec, guys. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, Jasper Gabriel says he's satisfied with reports received by the first day of face-to-face -face classes for it. All right, hold on. Let me see if you'll be able to hear. 
This is an audio. What I would want to call an audio press release. Oh, hold on. I don't, I don't remember if I said share. Yes, share song. No, stop there. Not that. Are you seeing my screen? Tell me if you're hearing. President of the Jamaica I'm Teachers Association, GTA, Jasper Gabriel, Are you says he's no? satisfied with reports received on the first day yes, of face-to-face -face classes right, for exit. On. Let me start over. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, Jasper Gabriel, says he's satisfied with reports received on the first day of face-to-face -face classes for exit examination students. Mr. Gabriel says no concerns were raised based on feedback from educators in the field. We only got feedback from members in the field and there's no, no, no concern really to begin with. Smoothly so far, um, we have not had any, any concern to report at this time. As the week goes on, I guess we'll get a better sense as to how things are unfolding. The JTA president noted that while they are yet to see the outcome of the face-to-face -face learning, caution still must be taken to prevent the spread of COVID-19. He says persons should allow this phase of the reopening to produce results in order to determine how soon classes can resume for all other students. We're always keeping an eye on the positivity rate. The World Health Organization suggests that we need to be 5% or below. And, and so we are not there yet, and so the risk factor is still high. So I, I don't think we'll do this should be sending out additional students for face to face without us getting into that kind of uh, space zone. I think we need to allow this space to work and see how the positivity rate responds across the country. Just for Gabriel, JTA president speaking with Nationwide News. Meanwhile, educators in Western Jamaica are reporting a smooth start to yesterday's resumption of face to face classes for students who will be sitting this year's exit examinations. Principal of Little London High School in Westmoreland, Garfield James, says there were no challenges faced on the first day. Mr. James. All right, the rest of the audio is, is not working, but that's another way of how we can do a press release. And it has been my experience where I sent a press release to a particular radio station and they said to me, do you have any audio? And they said to me, please remember that this is radio and we're not going to read it for you on, um, um, on our radio. So it's better if you can record it. So you send both, sorry, you send both print and audio. All right, so that's another way of how press releases are done in the real world, all right? For the purposes of the course and the exam, of course, there you only write it. But in the real world, you also have to sometimes include audio. And let me give you an example that of a company that does that, a radio station, but they now have, because of the changing nature of media, they have changed, they have somewhat modified how they do their news reporting. So we see the headline, gun licenses issued in 2015 to controversial and slain businessman raises concern. And then, oh, let me just pick on something. Let's just say we click on this, close this. All right. So you have this, which is part of the release on, the, on, the, um, on their website. And what they do, they include, but they didn't get any quotes for this one. Um, let me look at another one that has the audio in it. Let's go news. They usually have some sort of audio. Let me see if this one is there. There should they should have it in this one, because they normally. Right here it is. So the news reporter would say something like, "Opposition spokesman and transport and works." Is this does he pronounce his name Michael Phillips or is it Michael Phillips? I'm I've never. Anybody knows how we, the opposition? Michael think, Phillips. Michael Phillips, right. So opposition spokesman on transport and works, Michael Phillips, is questioning whether the government has any real interest in the state-owned Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC, 
Mr. Phillips says the public transport sector is now in the worst shape of the past few years. He says the JUTC continues to operate at losses and is missing every key target. According to Mr. Phillips, the JUTC is projected to experience further losses and projected to only operate 200 buses this year. He says the government has made ambitious commitments about improving JUTC, including a cash-less system, outfitting buses with Wi-Fi and sourcing 50 new buses. Then you play the Of audience. course, these did not happen. Madam Speaker, the JUTC is now in full decline, heading for a catastrophic crash, which cannot be blamed on the pandemic but rather on poor public transport policies and inept management. Madam Speaker, I have to ask a question. Ask, I have to ask whether it is the intention of the government to crash the JUTC. Then the reporter continues. He says the hackney carriages and route taxes are taking over routes exclusively designed for the JUTC due to the state-owned company's inability to serve those locations. And then you play the other audio, all right? So that's another way of how releases are now being done. And they're actually being demanded by um, many of these uh, media houses, whether it be television or radio, that you don't just send them a printed press release. They want to, if you're going to quote the principal, record the principal making the statement so that they can interpret it into their own broadcasting. All right? So I just wanted to make that um, clear. Make sense, people? Does it make sense? Yes, sir. Um, let's go back to the lecture on um, press release. I just want to ensure that we did cover all that we were supposed to. There are a few, one or two things, but just to ensure that we, we're not missing anything. Oh, let me share my screen. Are you seeing my screen? Are you guys seeing my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry about the noise. There's a there's construction going on next door. Yes, sir. I'm gonna try. I'm using my earplugs now to kind of reduce the, the impact of the noise. We had done done this we had written this lead in the first opening body paragraph what should i include in the first opening body paragraph because i already have the lead Based on what we discussed last week. Hello, I'm listening. So we have the lead, which is this. First body paragraph. What should we, what is usually um, done in the first body paragraph? Why everybody is silent? My Jesus. Sir, the explanation of, of what you spoke about in the lead. All right, so let's see if that is accurate. Let's go back to an example that we had looked at. This is an example, right? What the? Here's the lead. What should come next? Usually comes next what is a quote, right? Do we see that? Yes, sir. 
Right. So up here for the lead example that we have, we could, who would we, who would we uh, make speak in the case of Excelsior? The principal, sir. So we could, the principal, so we might open quotation, we might say this initiative. has been in the pipeline for a number of years and will benefit not only our over 2,500 students, but also the communities. Did you say main campus? Right, but also the communities in and around, um, let's say Mountain View, in and around the districts of Mountain View, the districts of Mountain View, said Fillmore McCarthy, principal of the St. Andrew, I like to say St. Andrew, St. Andrew based institution, institution. Then you, then you have another quote. Art dictionary. That, is, that speaks to the whole thing. We might say both ministries will assist with training. training. And I'm just making it up. Training staff and students about how to use these smart lecture rooms to ace their exams, to ace their exams. Already, Students already, parents of students and in the wider, wider communities are seeing, all right, let me see the, the tense that we use, will launch, are seeing the potential of improve academic improvement in academic performance and student confidence. I'm just making it up, you know. You can say he said, cause we know it's still the principal talking, he said. And then the third paragraph now is where you're not going to directly quote, but you're going to use what is called, is it the passive voice? Yes, the passive voice. So this is just, I'm just making it up. Making sense, people, I just want you to ensure that you understand because first of all, I will not have mercy when you write your persilesis and you're not going to write any foolish, just give me, I think you're going to get an A. You have to write very good persilesis. So please ensure that you go back to this example. The lead, you have the quote, I usually call it the, 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 the code paragraph or the direct code paragraph. And then the other paragraphs, no, you usually um, speak to the issue. All right. Or continue to give or, or provide additional information. All right. There is one example that I want to show you. I'm trying to find. Uh, it was published. What were we opening again? It was a lab. 
ECC Opens Lab. What name again? What's that? Uh, computer Labs. I was actually the one that wrote that press release. So I can't remember. No, so I need to say Excelsior Community College. Excelsior Community College. It was, okay, yes, this is it. Uh, computer labs, no. Oh yes, here it is. Right, it was actually published. Right, so let me see if I find it on the Jamaica Observer. Let me see if I find it. So we did put it on our website. But that was the in-house version. Let me see if I can find the other version. No. All right, let me type something else and see if I can find it. Oh, I know why opens e-learning lab. I think that's what they had titled it, Community College opens e-learning lab. Was it the, how was it the thing? Why can't I find this part of article? Give me one sec. It should be on my LinkedIn account. So let's go here. All right, articles. Let's go to a few of them. That's not what I'm looking for. Did I put this one there? BP Jacobs, College Month, five more. Five more. I think this one we this one was actually published. All right, I'm not finding it. That one is actually published. This is one that we did an international one. This is a collab between us and all right. So let me show you this one. This one I wrote with an overseas because we did a collaboration. Are you seeing my screen? We did a collaboration between ECC and Niagara College. So the, their PRO and, and, and myself wrote this together. So here's the lead. Here is our boiler point. Um, Excelsior, established in 1970, is the first of eight community colleges, the, and then here is their boiler, boiler plate. Sorry, are you seeing my screen? Hello. Yes, sir. Right. I just want you guys to be very cognizant of writing a press release because you will not write madness and give me and get an A. Sorry, we're not seeing it again. You're not supposed to be seeing it again. Are you seeing my screen now? <laughs> yeah. All right, so we have the boilerplate, we did that. We had looked at this example. Right, so when you write your press release, I've put this rubric on it as well for you to ensure writing a press release. So have I included contact details? Does my title convey concisely? Subject, does my first paragraph answer the, w, the five Ws? And does my first paragraph want, make the reader want to read it and all of that, all right? So that part, is very critical. I think there is one other thing that I kindle that I want to point out. 
there are a few other things and then we move on. All right, um, is this a press release? Uh, yeah. No, this is no, this is a course I teach in Canada. Okay, this is my, anybody uses Kindle? Books are actually very cheap. Anybody uses Kindle? No, apparently not. No. Digital books, digital books are actually very, very good. Uh, what did I want to? Right, I wanted to talk to you about some of these things, especially the one parts about the language use. Oh, oh. Just wanted to just run through a few of this and then move on quickly. Mm. Right, subject and verb and all of that. All right, not here. All right, so words and grammar. All right, so this part is important in the sense that it says keep adjectives and adverbs out of a press release. Please bear that in mind. Keep adjectives and adverbs out of a press release. Adjectives are words that describe nouns or pronouns. And here they have some examples. Exciting, fabulous, revolutionary. Adverbs are words that describe or modify verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. And they actually have an example here where the writer says, because of its amazing speed, instead of saying because of its speed and affordability, you're trying to avoid like amazing because this is a, this is actually amazing is modifying speed, which is unknown. So amazing is an adjective. Unbelievable affordability is, I'm almost sure that this would be uh, still an adjective modifying affordability. And here they have, they have revised it because of its speed and affordability. Do you, do you see that? Because amazing speed and unbelievable affordability makes it sounds as if you are writing a commercial or an infomercial, all right? Very, very critical that you try to avoid those things. As I said to you before, try and avoid figures of speech when you're writing a press release. Um, guidelines, third person, what they're saying is this. Writing in the third person is the first and best guideline to writing a press release, all right? So grammatically, third person refers to persons or objects using pronouns he, she, it, or they, all right? Under no circumstance, you're supposed to be saying I unless you are directly quoting, all right? That's very, very important. Another thing that they make mention of uh, action verbs, right? Action verbs, so verbs are words that denote action or state of being in a sentence. Grammatically, action verbs are just verbs that convey action as opposed to helping verbs or auxiliary verbs, which are more vivid than other verbs, all right? So they're saying action verbs are the one area you want to be a bit flashy with your writing, but they serve a valuable purpose. Action verbs help to engage the reader as well as convey ideas more um, concisely. So here they're saying this year's sales figures doubled those from the year before and were above analysis. And they're saying no, but it can be easily jazzed up with two action verbs. This year's sales figures doubled those from the year before, shattering analyst um, expectations and solidifying XYZ Corp's position. So they're saying that they prefer action verbs in the press release. Be very mindful of your subject and verb agreement. In other words, grammar is important and consistent verb usage. You don't want to be using the present tense at one moment and then you're going into the past tense. Then you're using the, um, the future tense, all right? Use the active voice in press releases. Active and, passive vo active and passive voice have to do with whether or not the subject of a sentence is performing. So what do they mean by that is Jessica hit the ball is the active voice as opposed to the ball was hit by Jessica. That's the passive voice, 
All right, these things are a little bit technical and uh, can be a little bit too much for you, but just be mindful of that. Um, and they said, don't bury the five doubles deep into the text. Remember the five doubles should come in the lead and all of that. And they're giving you various examples of how to do that and how to avoid certain things, all right? Just wanted to make sure proofreading is important. It's important that sometimes to have someone else read your work before it goes off to the media houses, all right? I remember to know that um, your person, all right, so this I want, wanted to make you make note of as well, knowing the rules. So the writing a press release serves like an e-release. So they include it for immediate release. This is the first thing that you should, that should be on any press release. The headline should be about 60 to 80 characters. All right, just remember that. The dateline of a press release immediately precedes or comes before the beginning of the lead or the first paragraph. And here they're giving an example, Huntsville, Alabama, September 14, 2005. And this is the day of the publication. All right, the city of Huntsville announced on Monday. If Monday is September 14, then you don't need to say Monday, you can just say announced today. All right, the boilerplate, very important. And they give you an example of boilerplate. Usually companies have a standard but what they're saying is that boilerplate should be preceded by a heading that says about company, but of course, replace the word company with the name of your company. So about deep. So it could be like about ECC or about Accessor Community College. Everybody got that. And of course, they have the contact details. Make sense, people? These are just there. Sir, can you go over about the boilerplate for me, please? All right. So remember, the boilerplate is the last paragraph in your press release, right? And really, what the boilerplate mm -hmm. is, just a summation of your company, all right? And what they're saying is that here in the press release, you should have about, so they say about company, but they're saying, when they say about company, they're saying that the company name should be there. So about Access Community College, about Digicel, about Flow, about wh whichever companies, and they're giving it, this is an example of a boilerplate, all right? Standard thing that you include in your press release about your company, all right? contact information and the boilerplate okay, is important yeah. because many companies they actually want to get a sense of what your company is about especially if it's not well known in the marketplace or in, especially if you're trying to redefine um, your presence in the marketplace very important understand guys understand let me hear if you understand yes sir all right so what i want you to do for me as a class activity, and this is going to be individual work now, you are going to actually start your assignment. I want for you to give me, and this is individual, this is not, this is not um, group, or you can work in peers, because for this assignment, I, I say that you guys can work in peers one or two persons. So let me just bring it, share my screen. Course work. All right, so let's look at the two scenarios, although you have it. So you do one of the following, all right? So, so Capri recommends that minors should have access to abortion without parental consent. This recommendation by the Caribbean Policy Research Institution has created a maelstrom among various stakeholder groups, including child protection agencies and religious groups, to better explore the recommendation and ventilate the social and moral implications of the recommendation. A coalition was formed to meet with Capri and government representatives. As chairman of the newly formed coalition, write a memo to be sent to your chair of Capri, inviting them to a meeting to discuss their recommendations and to provide suggested alternatives provide the agenda for this meeting, draft the action minutes from this meeting, and publish a press release to highlight the outcome of the meeting and confirm the coalition's commitment to protecting the rights of women and children, as well as engage in social reform. That's case one, or Jamaica tops homicides in Latin America and the Caribbean. And this is a Gleaner article. This is actually a headline. This frightening Jamaica Gleaner headline is of grave concern to all civic-minded Jamaicans. However, for the constabulary, for the Jamaica Constabulary Force, this label is a call to action to examine their crime fighting mechanisms. 
Imagine that you are the commissioner of police, write a memo to senior members of the JC of inviting them to a meeting to discuss the situation and explore strategies for more effective crime fighting mechanisms, prepare the agenda, draft the action minutes, draft a press release to ensure that the public, to, to reassure the public that the JCF is committed to the fight against crime, as well as to continue to serve and protect. What I want for you to do for me, and I'm going to put you in the breakout room, but you're going to, um, you have this document, right, people? Because I shared it with everybody, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm going to put you in the breakout room in Pierce, and I want you to give me the headline, the dateline, and at least the lead. So, sir, you're going to pick our pair? Or you want to pick your own pair? Yes, sir. I wanted to just do it randomly. No, it works better that okay. way. Okay. Because when I don't do that, then you hear who doesn't want to work with this person and I can't bother with the madness. I prefer to just let the system determine. Then it's arbitrary. Nobody can say Mr. Clark force them. And remember, you don't have to work with the person for the actual assignment. I just want you to, I just want to get a sense of where you are in terms of understanding how to write a press release. So I want the headline. I want the dateline. If you want to have a subheading, no problem. So I want the headline, the dateline, and the lead. All right. And if you can get a boilerplate, I think you can, the actual boilerplate is something that you can write or you probably can locate, find, um, probably if you read any, I don't know if you go on the JCF's um, webpage or on their social media platform, if you'll find a boilerplate or if you'll just write one. All right, this is a trick to it now, people. When you're given any press release, this is something that I do. If I'm having a challenge, I just find a similar press release based on what I want to write and mimic it. Not plagiarize it, mimic it. Do we understand that? Nobody now answer, Lord Jesus. Sir, Hello? I understand what you say. All right. Um, can I get another? any other responses? Hello? Yes, sir, I understand. All right. So I'm going to put you guys in the breakout room in Paris. So there are seven... So if you're in the break or two by yourself, then you're working on your own, okay? No props. Okay. I'm giving you 20 minutes to do this. 20 minutes. Remember, I've already emailed the assignment. I'm giving you 20 minutes. So at 5.20, no, at 6.20, I'm going to close the breakout room. I've opened the room now, so please go ahead. Please go inside.
All right. Um, so I just want to hear, I, I, um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go too very long in it. So Nicole and Renee, what is your headline? Which one did you choose and what is your headline? Um, the homicide one, sir, with the JCF. Mm -hmm. What's your headline? Homicide rate top rank in Jamaica and the Caribbean. So it's homicide. That's how you pronounce it. Homicide rate. Top rank in Jamaica and the Caribbean. Homicide. Is it that you're saying it's the highest? Yes, sir. I, I, I would change that top rank thing. When you get a chance, put it in the chat for me. Um, Dervit. You say peak. Hello, put what you have in the chat for me, please. <laughs> All <you>. right, sir. <laughs> Dervit and Kamalia. What's your headline? Sir, uh, Commissioner of Police. All right, go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. We chose the second one. Mm -hmm. Commissioner of Police examines crime fighting mechanism to stem crime. Okay, that's very clear. That's clear, very clear. Georgette and Patricia. Sir, we have uh, Capri recommends that minor have access to abortion without parental consent. I like that. Very clear. Um, Tashi. You were working on your own. What do you have? Which one did you choose and what do you have? Um, Tashi Muirhead, are you with us? Not sure. All right. Anybody has their lead can put it in the chat quickly. So while I move on, I can glance at it. You have your deadline and your lead. You can put it in the chat and I'll glance at it. Renee, I suggest you revisit that, um, that headline. Because it's saying homicide rate top rank in Jamaica. Jamaica, well, I would look at it. I, I would revisit this. I'm not sure if you're trying to say that um, the homicide rate is the highest in years in Jamaica and in the rest of the Caribbean or something like that. Uh, I would read some, the, I get the first part, Georgette, but I think the second, the second part, because it's a simple operation on May 12. Why am I seeing May 12 again at the Jamaica Conference Center? Is it that you're saying um, in an announcement at the Jamaica Conference Center, because probably you could start, you probably could start with the, with the where. Remember that that was one of the things you have to determine what you're going to start, which of the double is going to start it. So probably you want to say in an, in an announcement at the Jamaican Conference Center, the Jamaica Conference Center, Capri stated that parents have no need to approve their child to do an abortion. Our parents have no need to approve their children something like that but you'll fix it all right thank you sir because we kind of we, we were baffling a bit as to what to start with but yeah but remember remember we had said that you can you have to determine what you start with okay sir so thanks you so probably much. can give the event a name so in their annual um press conference or in their annual press briefing in, Right, or in in their annual press press briefing or whatever, you give it a kind of name. Yes, sir. Right. Okay, sir. Thanks. Like right, because remember, you now some of it you kind of have to make it up, you know, because so they give you a case scenario, but some of it you, you use a case scenario, but some of it you kind of have to add information to it. All right. So if you want to say in their annual press briefing at Jamaica conference, or in their in a press briefing, or you can say in a press briefing at Jamaica. Um, conference center and um, Capri usually you spell out the acronym and then you put it in brackets because nobody necessarily know what Capri is especially if it is going to be read by an international audience so spell out Capri and then you put Capri in in, in parentheses okay 
All right. Um, okay, sir. Why are we starting with a quote for the lead? The lead is almost never a quote. I think I said this before, the quote goes into what the first body paragraph, not the, the first paragraph is called the lead. The first body paragraph is a part of the body. All right, what so quotes? I, I'm not, why you think you are the only one in the class? Send Renee, this asking. I'm talking about somebody else who um, posted in the chat. Why you think you're the only person in my class? Sir, can you be specific what you're talking about then, please? The person who I'm talking or the persons I'm talking to, they know themselves. I don't have to call out their names. They want it to remain private. Okay, sir. Yes, Renee. Um, so I would um I would not start with, with a quote. Usually don't start your your um your press release with a quote, all right? You include it as a part of the body paragraphs, but not the lead itself. All right, so I would revise that as well. All right, so we move on now from the whole notion of press release. Um, I did not look on my group. Or... I looked at it. It still needs correction. I did. Okay. So in moving on now, the other thing that I want us to touch today is letters of complaint. Anybody has ever written a letter of complaint? Has anyone ever written a letter of complaint? Give me one sec. All right, I'm going to share some information with you in the WhatsApp group. I should have shared it before. I just remember, and it is relating to what we are doing. Um, okay, here it is. All right, tell me if you're seeing the information. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing it? Hello? Sorry, from photos? Yes, sir. Yes. Right, right. All right, so the 5% um, graded activity that is due tonight at 11.59, is the letter of complaint and all your writing is a letter of complaint addressed to the vice principal of academic affairs and institutional development about your complaining about the delay in you getting your grades your semester one grades. So it is due All right, so it's, you post it in the let in the letter of in the bin and turn it in call letter of complaint. Uh, let me go back here. 
Let me just go here and just make mention of it here. It's actually not something, it's not difficult or anything. Sir, can I ask a question? Go ahead. Do we do a, a final test of this course? Yes, it values 40%. Okay. Yeah. I'm actually, I have a past paper, but I am waiting. We're going to do it together. Question and answers. And that will be the final test? No, the, 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 you, have a, you have an exam. I'm going to prepare for the exam. Okay. So you, go, you have to look on the, um, the timetable for all of that. All right, so let me share screen here. PowerPoint, where is it? I sent this PowerPoint to you guys before. I really don't, this was when I was in my formative years as a teacher. I don't really rely on these kinds of things anymore, but um, no, from the current slide. All right, so letters of complaint, all letters of complaint should be expressed clearly in a formal tone, meaning that you can't, you can't use Jamaican Creole or you can't use threatening language and you can't use what is called bad word or explicit language. It must identify clearly all the inconvenience suffered by the complainant, refrain from using language that will only embitter, embitter the situation. Allegations must be supported with proof or evidence. If there is no need for settlement, indicate the cost in your letter. It uses the same business letter format as we did when you were writing your um, cover letter as well as your resume. Do I have an example here? I don't think so. Uh, it's not here. Um, this, however, gives you some additional information. Opening paragraph, the who, the five Ws, the middle paragraph, the precise nature of the complaint example, nature, extent of damage or defect, detail of defective parts, middle paragraph, ensuing inconvenience caused and the closing paragraph, action needed to, needed to be put right, example, replacement, reimbursement, time limit. Tell me if you understand that. So the opening paragraph identifies the five Ws and we're going to look at an example. The middle paragraph pretty much diagnoses the problem. What is the nature of the problem and the, 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 the so let's call it the second paragraph. The third paragraph now speaks to the inconvenience that you may have experienced because of what you talked about in the paragraph before. And then in the closing paragraph is really about what action you want to be taken to rectify the problem or to re remedy the problem. Understand? Hello? Yes, sir. So let's look at an example. Uh, where did I, let's look at an example. Hopefully I can. Uh, yes. Can I ask you kindly for us to submit that tomorrow, please? We I have give you until present... tomorrow. Sir, I, I have a you, presentation. I gave you until today. tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. You are so much, you're, you're welcome. All right. So let's look at an example. I, um, it needs to be. Let me share screen. I gave you until tomorrow to do the letter. Uh, where is it? Where it is. So you're, going, you're just going to complain to Dr. Malcolm. All right, are we seeing this? I, I can't get it any bigger, but I sent it in the WhatsApp group. So you see, for example, what is called the heading and then the internal address. This is called the heading. Your address is called the heading and this is the internal address. Remember, we're using block style, so everything goes to the left. No, indent, no indentation. All right, just skip a line to indicate a new paragraph, right? Do we, right, people? Yes, yes sir. Right, so just remember that that's, this is from an old example. All right, um, so this says, dear sir, I am writing to complain about a defective alarm clock manufactured by your company. I purchased the clock on the 20th of April, 2004 from Warner. I'm just reading from this. From Warner Clock Department Store. I was assured of the high quality of the clock at the time it was bought. One week after the purchase, I discovered that the clock was not functioning properly. The alarm did not signal at the time it was set for, but went off at all different times. Sometimes in the middle of the night, I returned it to the store when it, where it was bought to seek a, res, a solution to the problem. Mr. Wong, the sales manager, claimed, the re, the replacing, claimed that replacing the clock was impossible 
as that particular clock was no longer in production, I, exhor I exhorted him to refund my money and he became angry and abusive. I hope you can offer me an amicable set settlement by refunding my money or replacing my alarm clock. If request is not met favorably, I would have no alternative but to lodge a complaint with the Consumer Affairs Agency or resort to the press for public coverage of this matter. It is in the interest in the interest of good relations, I sincerely hope that this matter would not take this unfortunate turn. Usually you don't threaten um, in the letter of complaint unless you have unless you have explored all other avenues unsuccessfully. So clearly this person did that because they mentioned that they spoke to the manager, one of the managers, I think the sales manager, who did not give a satisfactory response. All right. So this is just how you write a letter of complaint. So remember now, for homework, you have to upload to turn it in by tomorrow. You're writing a letter of complaint to the vice principal of academic affairs and institutional development, Dr. Zari Malcolm Walker, about how unsatisfied you are with the delay in your getting your semester one grades. Okay, guys, everybody understand that? And it is individual. It is individual. All right, um, let me just show you that I've created the bin on Turnitin for you to submit the assignment. And remember, it's just three paragraphs. Just go back to the example that I showed you. Uh, where is it? So here is the bin, letter of complaint. All right, this is the letter of complaint. So it's due tomorrow. All right, it's due tomorrow. Everybody. Sir, before you exit, you yes. can look if my uh, PowerPoint was uploaded, please. All right, let me share back screen. Who uploaded it? So let me go here to view. George. Yes, it, here it is. Okay, thanks, sir. All right. Okay, so we did letter of complaint. Oh yes, I want to show you one last thing about the letter of complaint, which is just reinforcing. It's not that I'm giving you any additional information, but really reinforcing in the information that I have said before. Oh, here it is. So let's just listen in. Today, we are going to look at how to write a letter of complaint. A letter of complaint has three clear parts. It starts with an intro. All right, so hold on, let me. You're seeing my screen? Can I get at least one response? Please? Yes, sir. Okay. Today, we are going to look at how to write a letter of complaint. A letter of complaint. You can actually take a picture of the screen if you want, all right? Although this is more a social, was is this our business? Alice, it has three clear parts. It starts with an introduction that clearly says why you are writing. Then a main body that provides the reader with information so they can respond to the complaint. And then finally, in the conclusion, you say what action you want the reader to take. It's important to keep calm and keep your emotions under control. You may be very disappointed with something, but remember to be respectful and polite. Okay, let's look at this letter. In the opening paragraph, he states why he's complaining. It's about the broken pavements and the potholes in his neighborhood. Then in paragraph two, he gives details about the broken pavements and says they are a danger to the public and that he's worried about children and the elderly. He says that a child or an elderly person might trip, fall over, and get hurt. In paragraph three, the focus is on the potholes, and he makes it clear that if a bike hits a pothole, the cyclist could fall off 
or swerve into oncoming traffic. He's clearly concerned. Then, in the final paragraph, he asks the council to take action. And firstly, come and have a look at the problem, and then repair both the pavements and the roads as soon as possible. He's very helpful, and he even gives the council his telephone number if they need more details. The council would find it difficult to ignore his request, as there is no emotion in the letter. It provides the necessary information, and it closes with the action he wants taken. I hope this helps. All right, so that was just really to solidify some of what I've said before about the letter of complaint, all right? Very simple. Letter of complaint is very simple. The, I, I, they normally don't bring these other types of letters, so I, I, I don't even want to teach it. It's really unimportant. They don't really teach the other methods. All right, the other thing that I want to make mention of is, no, I'm not ready for that yet. All right, this is, all right, anybody has ever um, written a report while you are working? Any written a report for work or read a report written at work? Has anybody ever done that? No, sir. No, okay. All right, so report. Sorry, not a, re not a worded report, like a, more like a variance with a lot of numbers. Mm -hmm. Which is but probably a little, a little word, like explaining why you're overspin or underspin. I do that. Okay, so it could, and I'm sure that could be considered as a, a sort of report because you're submitting it to somebody. All right, so report as an internal document. Um, so a report is a document which sets out details in clear systematic ways of a meeting, event, incident, etc., etc. It can be short or extended. So which is telling you that you have short reports and you have what are called extended reports. So reports are composed to meet either standardized routine reporting needs, example, on the condition of a piece of equipment or as a result of a call for analytical investigation. It could be an accident at work, it could be that there's a, there was a physical um, altercation between employees and a report is asked to be written. It could be an inventory report. Uh, there are so many different types of reports. The, one that's, the, the, the ones that really concern us are the formal and informal reports. So the, and you have, with the formal report, you have what are called um, short formal reports and you have extended formal reports. In this course, you're not required to really go and do an extended formal report. All right, it's actually not a part of the course work, but I can see them putting it on the final exam. Usually they don't, but it could come, so I'm still teaching it. So extended formal report is used for high level extensive reports by central or local governments and companies. You see a lot of that taking place in parliament. Short formal report, no use in formal reporting situations where middle or senior manager reports to senior or top manager. And you have memorandum report, which we're not looking at. And we have the short informal report, which is another one that we, we, that, um, we have to be mindful of, used when information is of a lower status and less complex. This is what is important for you to, to, to be mindful of, the, the, the components of the formal report. So in the extended, there are several things that are there. Pagination really means numbering the pages. That's really what it means, or sectionalizing stuff. Um, really numbering the pages, the page numbers per se. And you have the short formal. Usually for this course, they focus on the short formal report. And they usually include it in the, as, a, as, a, as a coursework piece. I'm not seeing it, no. I don't know if it will be coming on the, sh on the final exam. Probably not. Or they might just um, put it in one of the sections, all right? So these are the 
the, the quote unquote components of a short form report. The title page or heading, the terms of reference, the procedure identification of tasks, the findings, the conclusions, the recommendations where necessary, and appendices if appropriate, because it could be that there are other things that you need to include in it that you cannot include as a part of the formal report per se. And uh, the short informal report, no background introduction, situation information, finding conclusion and action required. And we will be looking at examples of that. All right, so do we understand? Um, I know you won't understand every single thing, but do you understand the general thrust of report writing in a business um, environment? Do we understand, at least we understand that part? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so let's go in a little greater detail about um, reports. Uh, okay. So this is this this recording or this video will talk a little bit about the different types of reports. So it's going to mention various types of reports, and that is important as well. You're hearing and seeing. Were you hearing and seeing people? So pay attention to the, the formal and the informal, the short formal, the extended, and the informal. You can ignore, so take notes in other words, but you can ignore the other ones. Um, so I don't need to go through all of it because, um, as I said before, you just need to pay attention to the section that is important. Is there anything you learned about the formal report and versus the informal report? Hello? Anything, guys? Can you, for example, give me 
one major difference between the formal report versus the informal report. And there is silence. The angel has passed, everybody. Can you speak? I'm listening. Go ahead, Renee. I'm waiting for me to say right. Go ahead. You won't know unless you say it. Um, sir, I was gonna say the formal report basically. Yeah, it's more worded um, and it's more focusing on the problem and the solution while the informal is short. Short. Yeah. And it, you know, it, it's, Go ahead. you know, so inform, you know, so it have limited amount of words our research done to bring it across. Okay, all right, so it's not- Informal, I could do it as first person and second person. But when the formal is like, you know, you're taking it to higher rounds. Okay. Usually you try to avoid I and me in um, any report. Okay. You try to um, avoid that. But thanks for the attempt. Let's look at something that gives us a little bit more meat on the bone in terms of the informal report versus the formal. These days, Please take notes. Remember this might come on the final exam. Hey, at your best, wherever you- As you continue working on your proposal and as you prepare to work on your recommendation report, let's take a few moments to just very briefly talk about informal reports and formal reports, what their differences are and what they have in common. Now, just to briefly review, reports can be created to do any number of the following. Many reports will do multiple things. For example, your recommendation report is going to present information. It's also going to analyze that information and then ultimately recommend an action. Now, as I said, there are two broad types of reports, informal reports and formal reports. And you'll sometimes hear these referred to as short reports and long reports. And that's one of the key differences between the two report types. Informal reports are typically no more than one to six or so pages in length. And formal reports can be incredibly lengthy. Informal reports are often written for internal audiences, although that is not always going to be the case. Formal reports are written for internal or external audiences and sometimes may be presented to both. Informal reports, though, are going to cover a fairly simple topic and that is why they can be so much shorter. Formal reports are going to cover something that is complex enough that it needs multiple pages to really cover it in entirety. And formal reports are typically going to carry a pretty high significance in the work situation that is causing you to create it. Now, because formal reports are so much longer and more complicated than informal reports, that means that a formal report is going to include what is called front matter and back matter. The front matter is going to include a title page, a letter of transmittal, a table of contents, a list of illustrations if you're using visuals, and a summary or abstract. And the back matter would include any other information such as a glossary, any appendix information that you might need to include, and a references list. Informal reports will not include any of that information because, again, it's a simple topic and it's not a very long document, so you don't really need a table of contents and a list of illustrations, an abstract, all of that stuff in order to get through the document. There are three overall functions for a report, and it's important that you keep in mind that although reports might inform, analyze, and or recommend, 
Many reports will do two or all three of these. For example, again, your recommendation report is going to inform, it is going to then analyze that information, and ultimately it is going to provide a recommendation. You'll see now several different types of reports that are common in the workplace world. And depending on what your field is, you may have to write some or all of these report types in your future career. Regardless of whether you are creating an informal or formal report, it is important that you keep in mind the layout and design and content issues that we've been discussing for all technical documents. Any report, whether it's formal or informal, should include headings and subheadings. It should include an introduction, a discussion section or body, and a conclusion and or recommendation section. Your formal report, again, is going to be lengthy enough that it will require a table of contents to lead the reader to each heading. Your informal report will be short and simple enough that it won't need that. Regardless, both types of reports will include headings and all of these other sections. All right, so can we, oh, all right, so um, we will continue on Monday. I see you guys on Monday. All right, we will continue on Monday. So just bear these things in mind until I see you again. Remember to upload your letter of complaint. As I said before, I don't know that they will give you the formal report on the final exam because usually it takes a lot of energy out of students. They usually give it as a coursework. I know they like, for example, on final exams, they give you like the first release, the job let the, the resume, the cover letter. They tend to give you um, the memo, the agenda, just as how you're seeing the coursework. That's usually how the final exam, the format the final exam takes, in addition to the multiple choice questions. So we will wrap up report writing in our next class and then move on to the whole notion of teleconferencing the types of teleconferencing and you know some of the aids that are used and the advantages and disadvantages of these aids. All right, have a good evening, everybody. Remember to upload your um, letter of complaint and I'll see you on Monday. Enjoy your weekend, stay safe and stay healthy. You too, sir, thanks. You too, sir, enjoy yourself your evening. All right.